Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering creating a followed content dashboard. So you can think of this similar to like your Twitter homepage or your Facebook feed or whatever. Uh, essentially we're going to be aggregating content from users that we follow. The content that they post, which in this case will be tweets, will then be shown on our dashboard. If there's users on the app that we don't follow, we won't see their stuff. So the way that we're going to do this is by using the follow ability gem, uh, this page, sorry. This is a wonderful tool that we've used in the past. It allows you to send and receive follow requests, block users, etc. It is very easy to use, uh, very quick to plug in and essentially allows us to focus on the actual content we want to create here. So to get started, we're just going to do a rails new. I'm going to call mine video, uh, just so we have a project here. And we're just going to go ahead and run that. This timer up here is how long this took me to set up initially, which was about 57 minutes. But a lot of that was just me pacing back and forth, trying to think of what video idea we were even going to make. So that should give you a rough idea of how long it took me to create this feature from scratch using the tool. I'm going to go ahead and CD into our video app. And in here, we need to do a couple things. First, we need to add device and we need to add the follow ability gem. Those two are going to give us the functionality we need, of course. Uh, pretty self-explanatory what device does. We're just going to do a Rails G device colon install command. Then we can do a Rails G device user command. After we do that, we can do our Rails G follow ability colon install command to generate those migrations for us. And now the last thing that we really need to do is generate our tweets. So say Rails G scaffold tweet we'll give each tweet a uh, body of type text and a user colon references let me move this out of the way so you can see that user colon references then we'll go ahead and we'll run that at this point we're largely done with a lot of the generation of the uh, models and stuff that we need we just need to generate our controllers so we're going to have a couple custom controllers we're going to use here because we're going to break this functionality up into multiple files First, we'll have our follows controllers, and this is uh, just gonna have two actions that we'll create ourselves. The, oops, I totally forgot to type controller. Rails G controller follows. We then have a Rails G controller pages home. That of course will be our home page, And then we can have a Rails G controller. We'll call this one the profiles controller. And inside of the profiles controller, we'll just have a show action. This video is brought to you by learn.deanin.com. That's right. I'm bringing you this video. I have a course now. Go check it out. Link in the video description. Now that all of that's done, we can go ahead and run a code dot to open this up in VS Code or your text editor of choice, of course. And we can come over to the getting started page uh, and close it right away. So uh, basically what we have to do is uh, we'll start by just seeding our database real quick because we're going to need like three different users and you don't want to sit here and watch me create these manually because that sounds kind of boring. Uh, we're going to have two that I'm just going to copy and paste in real quick. We just call user.create with the exclamation mark. We pass in the email password and password confirmation just like we always do. Uh, but I forgot to seed the third one, so we're just going to go ahead and do that right now. We'll change John's name to Jane at Doe.com. So we now have Dean, John, and Jane. And then we can go ahead and save that. Now we can run a Rails DB colon seed command that will add those users into our database. After we do a Rails DB colon migrate, we can do a Rails DB colon seed, sorry. So we'll run these two commands simultaneously. Uh, but we don't need this to be a Rails. It could actually just be a DB migrate DB seed. That will seed our database and now we can do a rails s and we should be good to go i'll come over here to localhost port 3000 and we'll see the default rails stuff now let's come into our routes and let's configure these so there are a couple routes we're going to have to make of course we're going to go with the typical changing the pages home to a root so let's change the git to a root the slash to a hash we then have the git profiles show uh, for this one we're going to actually change this. We're just going to say resources for the profiles, and we're only going to do this for the show action. Just a little bit easier to read for me to know what I'm doing here and a bit more uh, easy to maintain as I scale this up. And then finally, we need the follow path and we need the unfollow path. For the follow path, we're going to do essentially something like this, but instead we're going to just set this to the follows controller. 
So we just pass in the ID when we want to follow someone, and then we have the unfollow path as well. But both of these need to also be a post. So we're going to post to follow slash ID. That goes to the follows uh, follow path. And then we do that as follow. And then for the unfollow, we post to the unfollow slash ID, which goes to the follows controller unfollow action as unfollow. And because GitHub Copilot decided this is how we were going to do it, uh, I personally prefer to use this syntax. So we're just going to go ahead and change those real quick just to sort of save my sanity. Okay, so that gives us our posts, that gives us our resources, our route, uh, and I think at this point we are pretty good to go with our route. So let's go ahead and close this. We can refresh this, it'll take us to the home page. Now for the actual follow functionality, we come into our model, our user right here, and we say followability, and that gives us the ability to follow. This line right here will give us all the functionality we need, um, except for a quick little unfollow trick we're going to use later, but we'll take a look at that. For the views, we're going to come into the profiles page. So in the profiles show page, what we want to do is we want to create a uh, button that allows us to follow or unfollow a user. So we can come in here, we can just, oops, we can just render the partial for followability slash follow button, and we'll pass in a user that we still have to define. And we'll also do a at user.email so we can see whose profile we're on. Now we do need to come into the profiles controller now and actually set the user because right now we're just kind of uh, assuming we have an at user. So what we have to do is say at user equals user.find and we'll just find by the params ID. So now if we uh, come over to like uh, slash two, it'll take us to John's profile, oops, slash profiles slash two. It'll take us to John's profile page, but we don't have this follow button. So we have to actually create it. Let's come over to our views, right click, new folder, call it followability. And inside of followability, we'll create a underscore follow underscore button dot html dot erb. And the logic inside of this button is actually pretty simple. The first thing we do is we check if the current user, and we use the ampersand here just to make sure that the user's logged in. If they're not logged in, this won't uh, throw a nil when you try to call this, this function. If the current user follows the user that we're passing in, in this case, John, then we want to have a button to unfollow, which will take us to the unfollow path where we pass in the user with a method of post. We then do something very similar in the else. We just say this is a button to follow, takes us to the follow path with the user and the method of post. We can go ahead and save that, refresh the page, and now this is working as expected. We can click this, uh, but nothing will happen. And if we scroll up here, we can see that the error is going to tell us, uh, hey, you don't have the error, uh, you big dummy, what are you doing? So let's come over to our follows controller and let's implement this functionality. So in the follows controller, the first thing we want to do is say, hey, you should probably authenticate and you should probably set the user. Now to set the user, we can just very quickly create a private area right here and say set user at user equals user dot find params ID. Now we're also going to need the follow params because we're passing back that user ID. So for that, we can just say params dot permit ID. And then we're good to go there. This is, of course, optional. You don't need to do this. Uh, you can just use the params itself. Then up here, we need to have our def follow action and we need to have our def unfollow action. For the follow action, because of how the follow ability gem works, you're going to be sending a follow request that the other person has to accept. So what we do is we say current user send follow request to the at user. But we're using this not as a friend request gem where we have mutual friends. We're just using it as a way to follow each other. So the way I like to do it is I just like to say, then the at user should accept the follow request so that the current user is now following them. So we're just kind of like assuming this is accepted and it allows you in the future to maybe, you know, make this an option where the user can uh, either automatically allow people to follow them or they have to be approved and then this would be the code you would call to do that approval. So maybe the user sees a list of pending follow requests, which you can of course check in the follow ability gem. Uh, and then you can, you know, either accept or decline it, etc. In my case, I'm just going to automatically do it. 
after we finish there, we then want to just redirect to the profile path. And that is essentially the logic of the follow action. For unfollowing, we don't have to uh, check for that, you know, um, request. We just automatically unfollow. And then we redirect to the profile path. Now for this unfollow action here, which if we refresh, uh, we do actually have to log in. So what we're gonna do in our profiles controller is the same thing we do in our follows controller. We're just gonna force people to log in on all of these so that uh, we don't accidentally run into an issue where uh, we're not logged in while we're testing this. In your actual app, you'd probably wanna you know, have actual functionality, uh, but I'm incredibly lazy when I do these tutorials sometimes. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. So now I've logged in, I'm looking at John Doe's profile page. I can click the follow button on him. I'm gonna hit enter a couple times to move this down so we can see yellow text appear. So you can see here, does a bunch of stuff. Then you come down here, inserts into the followability relationship, the followable type, the ID and the, the type again. And then it updates the relationship status after we call that update. So now that that's done, if we refresh, You'll see uh, we are uh, following John currently. If we click unfollow, we'll get this uninitialized constant followability followable relationship. To fix this, we just come into our user and we just have to implement this uh, unfollow method. And it's a, a little bit interesting, but the way that I do it is I just say for the uh, user, I would like to grab the followable underscore relationships dot where the followable ID is the provided user ID. So in this case, this will be John's ID. So all of the relationships where we are following John, we want to destroy all. If we save that and then we refresh the page, we can now click unfollow. And you can see right here, it deletes them and then we get sent back to the page. So now we have the ability to follow and unfollow users. And of course, John's not gonna see these, uh, these follow requests. So if we hit Control Shift N, open up an incognito tab and go over to localhost port 3000, we can log in as john at doe.com with a password of password. And now what we can do is we can uh, maybe as John go over to slash tweets. You can create a new tweet that says something like, lol, can you imagine? And then because we didn't clear the form, we do have to provide John's IT manually, which is a little bit strange, uh, but that allows us to create this tweet. So now we have John's uh, profile here. We have these tweets, but if we go back to our homepage, we're not actually seeing them. So let's make them visible. This is a very simple step, really. Uh, effectively, all that we do is we create a scope in our tweet model. For the scope, we call it timeline, and then we pass in a user and we just check where the user of this tweet is equal to the provided user. Now in the, uh, I guess in the dashboard page or the profile page, or no, the home page is what we called it. In here, all we really do is we just say, look, I want the at tweets to be equal to the tweet.timeline, which is what we just called it. And then we're gonna pass in the current underscore user and then the uh, dot following. So this is all of the people that the current user is following. If we do that, and actually let's do a console right here just so we can play around with this without having to error out the page. If we do that, we can now scroll in and say at tweets, which is an empty uh, collection of tweets. If we come back to John's profile page and follow, and then we go back to the home page, oops, back to the home page, localhost port 3000. And now if we do at tweets, you'll see that gives us our single tweet. We can of course iterate through this and uh, if you wanted to, you could probably include your own tweets. Uh, it's kind of not the point here, but maybe you want to also see your tweets combined in this timeline. Uh, in that case, what you could probably do is just say like dot or, and then you could do something like uh, tweet dot timeline where the current underscore user is passed in. So you're only passing in one user and that is the current user. And let's actually hit enter here and tab this over so it's a bit more readable. So basically you're grabbing all of your own tweets or your current user's tweets, and then you could probably do something like a order by the created at DESC, and then you can refresh and do at tweets. And there's only gonna be one here, but now if we go over to localhost port 3000 slash tweets, we can create a new tweet, say hello world, and pass in our own user ID. Go back to the tweets. Now, if we come to the homepage and refresh, we can do at tweets and we'll have both of those appearing. 
So let's come to our actual uh, pages homepage here. The, oh, I guess we have to come down to the views. Uh, and then we want to come to the pages and the homepage. What we'll do is we'll just say at tweets dot dot each do tweet. We can end it. And then in here, we just do a render for tweets slash tweet, pass in the tweet itself. And here we can now see all of the people we're following. If we open this up in Chrome as a third browser choice, we can come in here and log in as uh, Jane, oops, excuse me, Jane at doe.com with a password of password. Go over to slash tweets. You'll also notice she's not seeing any because she doesn't follow anyone yet. We'll just say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We'll pass in her own ID to create it. And if we refresh, the tweets page shows all of those for John. The home page for Dean only shows the two by the people he's either the people he's following or his own. Uh, and John's home page should also just show uh, his own tweet. So that is all of the use cases. It is pretty simple to set up. As you can tell, it was like a 15 minute tutorial, I guess, give or take. Uh, and you have your timeline functionality with the followability gem. And as you can see, setting up this feature took about 60 minutes. The tutorial took about 15. So as you get more familiar with it, the time does decrease quite a bit and you get pretty, pretty quick with it. Hopefully moving forward, we can use some of this functionality to create something like a complete Twitter clone or, you know, something else. I feel like Twitter's topical right now. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave you here. Hopefully this was a enjoyable video. Hopefully I will see you in the next one and, uh, you know, enjoy your uh, holiday break if you're celebrating it. And if you're not, um, I don't know, go order a pizza or something. That sounds good.